Hey, I'm Lou Brutus. We're backstage at Rockfest 2018. Jose from Incubus joins me now. It's nice to see you again. How you been? You as well. I'm good, man. Thanks. Everybody's happy. Everybody's healthy. Everybody's families are good. Yeah, so far so good. Then it's all just rock and roll and it's easy. All nothing but rock and roll. Well, with rock and roll, things go wrong and I call them spinal tapping in moments. I like to ask everybody about them. It's where everything just basically sort of fucks up and you wish you were someplace else. What comes to mind with you in your years of touring? Good one. Um, uh, nothing's really coming to mind, although I know we've had those moments. But it comes uh, to my dreams all the time where I sit down at my drum kit and they just kind of all fall apart. First note of the song. Uh, but other than that, I can't think of anything actually off the top of my head that's actually happened to us. Let's go back to, uh, to the, uh, the dream. Uh, one of the cast from Beartooth, was it Beartooth? Called them gig mares. <laughs> gig Nightmares <laughs> about gigs. That, that works. <laughs> oh, no. It was, it was Dale from Seether. I'm sorry. That's, that's, yeah. that's a good way. Uh, now, do you, do you have different ones that happen? Do they, and how often do these things happen? Uh, not too often, but uh, it's different scenarios, but it's always the same, like the same thing that happens. I'll sit down at my drum kit, ready to play it, hit like the kick drum, and everything just falls, like kind of melts away from me. <laughs> Do you awesome. wake up in a cold sweat from these? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> <laughs> now, what year did you start playing drums? How old are you? Um, I was about 14 when I started actually playing like a drum kit. Right. Um, but before that, I would just play random kits at friends' houses. But that was 91 uh, when we started our band. And I literally had a drum kit for a few months before we actually started our band and it was mike our guitar player his right. stepdad's drum kit that had we had brought over to my house and we'd been playing for a few months over the summer and literally started the school year we started incubus what was the reaction from the other kids when you guys started to really get it together I, and um, i mean at that level at high school level um i mean there wasn't really much of a reaction we were just you know kids playing in a band like other kids in other bands and um it was just w when we started playing parties at at our friends homes and throughout high school it was just a good time you know we weren't taking it too serious we were just having fun and everyone else enjoyed it too so um we just kind of never stopped tell me a little bit about the differences if you would be so kind about drumming live and drumming in a recording studio to get a song done. How do you approach them differently? What are your setups like that are different? Um, yeah, I, I kind of treat them as two separate entities. No, no. You know, uh, the setup, for example, that I play live is much, much different than I play in the studio. In the studio, um, I usually play full stack toms, full toms, where live I play what they call short stack toms just because mm -hmm. I sit really low, so my whole kit is really low. Um, but for recording, you want a big, more full sound, so I usually play full, full toms, and um, also I, I usually just play many different drums, so different kick drums, whether it's a 22 or like, you know, a 28, mm -hmm. um, different size rack toms. Uh, it's kind of just pieced together to whatever sounds the best. Um, and a lot of that is usually um, sort of directed by producers that we use. They usually have their favorite kits, favorite kick drum or tom or floor tom. Um, and then I bring just tons of other drums and cymbals and dozens of snares and we just sort of piece it together per song you know what if this what if I use this ride for this song and this snare with this ride and it's just sort of you know Mitch uh mixing and matching which is kind of it's just kind of fun it's a whole different animal in and in and of itself um but it's you know just just as fun and rewarding for sure how much of an antique gear guy are you? Do you go, gee, I've got to get a, this is a bad example, might not exist, a, a 1955 Slingerland snare drum? Uh, you know, I'm not a gearhead at all. <laughs> You're a lucky man. I just, I you mean, save I, more money that way. I mean, I definitely, I definitely have my favorite, you know, drums that I like to play. Sure. And uh, I've got a lot of them, but I'm not always out looking for the coolest snare or the coolest this or that, you know, I'm. I'm usually pretty happy with what I got, and um, yeah, so I'm not, I'm not truly a, a big gearhead. One other thing about recording, specifically recording drums, there are still folks who make records who are uncomfortable 
recording drums digitally. They'll do the other instruments digitally, but they like an analog sound for the drums because they don't feel the ones and zeros can competently capture the sonics of percussion. Do you have a preference on that, or is it something that you can notice anymore yourself, or you just go with the flow? I mean, for the most part, we still tape drums to tape. Yeah. You know, um, I mean, also, I mean, everything, or or we'll we'll do it to Pro Tools and then bounce it on a tape. Sure. And back just to get that that low end. I mean, you kind of yeah. At the bottom, you you know? kind of don't even really have to do that. You know, I mean, you can get plugins any, for everything. You can yeah. get. Any sound you want, you know, it's it's limitless just with whatever with Pro Tools or whatever you're using. And but you know, it's part of we're we're still kind of old school too, where we get a big drum room and yeah. do that whole thing. But you know, um, maybe it'll change in the future for us. But we've still been doing it that way, and I, I still enjoy it for sure. Yeah, and uh, you know, and it's probably a common question for you, so I apologize, but. The longevity of the band at this point is very impressive. I would just have to think at the root of it is you're a bunch of guys who have been together since you're kids, so, you know. Yeah, I mean, for the most part, you know, it's been 27 years for me, Brandon and Mike, um, and then our newest member, Ben, has been in the band for like 17 years yeah. or something like that. Um, Still I, the rookie. I, <laughs> right, <laughs> the new kid on the block. But, I mean, literally that's kind of what it is, just – friends growing up together and sharing, you know, a bond and a connection through music. And, you know, it hasn't always been, you know, just easy gliding through the whole thing. We've had our ups and downs, but I think now that we're older, we really can appreciate what we do. And, um, I think just, we have that mutual respect for one another and it, and it allows us to continue. You know, there was times where we didn't want to continue and we kind of made it through the other side and we're having such a good time, you know, these days. And, we're really, we're really just, we're happy to hang out with each other and play music and travel the world. You know, we feel very fortunate. And uh, I, I don't mean this to be snarky. You guys are, you know, adults and family men now. So yeah, yeah, and that's that's a big part of it too. Is just um, living our lives on our own as well, outside of the band, and that in and of itself lets us appreciate what we have within our band. And so as we grow as people and it, as individuals. Um, we grow as a band as well, you know. One last thing, uh, particularly for uh, a big festival like you're playing today, boiling down all the music Incubus has done into one set can't be easy, and it can't make everybody happy. <laughs> yeah. How do you do it? Uh, we just, we do our best, you know. That's, throw, throw, that the, is, throw the darts. Yeah, that's the hardest part out of this whole thing is a set list. I mean, because we've got 100 plus songs, and we play, you know, 20 to 23 24 songs you know for lucky and everyone wants to hear something you know so we just do the best we can and we try to put on the best show we can and obviously we can't we can't play everything but we still have a good time and i think i think that in and of itself seeing us play and having a good time and just doing what we do i think you know that that's good enough for our our audience jose if the biggest problem you have in life is putting together a set list for 50,000 people who are going to cheer for you. You are a lucky, lucky man. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, man, I feel, I feel like I'm a very lucky man. No fun. Can you give us any insight into the song? Um, yeah, that's, that's actually a, been a super fun song yeah. uh, to play. And it's really funny. Uh, that song wasn't really going to even make the record. And we had uh, our friend Sonny Skrillex mixed the record and this song we were kind of like oh, I don't know if it should make it or not and he heard it he was like oh this is awesome he's like but you know it needs some work so he kind of <laughs> did his thing and he cut out a couple of parts and just remixed it and and it's just became one of my favorite songs on the record and it sounds just incredible and it's one of the funnest songs to actually play live but it's just funny that and there was actually a couple of instances like that where you know, we had another song, Familiar Faces, where we were kind of lukewarm about it. It wasn't great, wasn't, you know, horrible. And Sonny took it into a back room, came back an hour later, and we were like, wow, this song's awesome. Damn. <laughs> so, you know, there was... Is that a, us? Yeah, there was a few a few moments like that, and No Fun was was being one of them. So I'm, I'm excited to play it tonight, and, you know, it's been, it's been a good part of our set. Good stuff. Looking forward to it. Jose, always a good Thank pleasure you. to yeah, see you. Yeah, good to see you. Thank you.
We are backstage at Rockfest in Kadot, Wisconsin, Incubus.